I've had a whole lot of questions about how I tie my snowshoes on. So I thought I'd do a short tutorial on, on uh, how I do it, how they did it. However, not until probably the later part of the 1700s. So the, uh, I'm using lamp wick uh, and lamps as we know them today, like coal oil lanterns, came into play around 1780, somewhere in that time period. Prior to that, they had Betty lamps. Um, so what I'm using uh, here to tie this, well, before I get into that, uh, we owe the snowshoe. It, it was gifted to us by the indigenous peoples of North America. And the pair that I use, the, these are quite old. They, they could be upwards of 100 years old. Um, I search flea markets far and wide to try to find ones that are still in good enough quality to use and not simply a wall hanger. So the, these guys are perfect and I've really looked after them. Uh, so they're sort of like our traditional, what we think of the traditional wooden snowshoe today, but they have a much tighter weave and the flotation's absolutely amazing on these guys. Anyway, I'm going to do um, a tutorial here on, on how I tie these guys. So I'm starting with um, about five feet, roughly five feet of lamp wick. And it can be purchased bulk today. Uh, you can buy it in 25 foot rolls, 50 foot rolls. All right, here's how I do it. So the first thing I do is I find uh, an opening on either side of the toe hole and I go down through on both sides and make it the uh, lacing sort of equidistance. Approximately, doesn't have to be that accurate. There's not a lot of measuring here. And then I come back up through the toe hole. We'll just do one side first. The fitting I'll do on the other side. So come through the toe hole and I go from the front to the back. And this has been on and tied. So it's kind of kind of kinky, but if, if it's new or I try to keep this like I do it, just try to keep the kinks out of it. it makes it a little more comfortable on the toe. And I simply wrap around the piece that I've put down through the snowshoe. So essentially what I'm going to end up with is uh, a vertical loop, which this one's going to be, and then a horizontal loop that's going to go around the foot. So I only need to wrap this till it gets just above where my foot, uh, just basically above the top of the foot. So that should be pretty close. And we'll put foot in. Pull this up pretty snug. I want it pretty snug. It will it, it, once it's all tight and settled in, you don't you don't have to adjust these anymore. And one of the advantages of this is there's no buckles to freeze, no buckles to break. And I've had this same pair of harnesses on this, these snowshoes for over five years. So very, very durable. So once I find that, the fit over the toe, I'm gonna give that guy a little pinch, remove my foot. I'm gonna do the same on this side. So going towards the back first, wrap it around, keep the kinks out if you can. Again, I simply want to get this to the to the point that it comes over the top of my my moccasin. And then I think I'll take this guy one more time. Okay. So at this point, slide the toe back in. Just make sure that's the adjustment I want. That's pretty good. Then you simply come around the back of the foot. I'm going to tie a square knot here. Oh, that guy's a little rotten. Okay, maybe five years is the, the limit of them. I hope I got enough to demonstrate this. Okay, and there we have one tied harness. And the fun part of this is, if it's tied properly, I may have to do a little adjustment. 
But essentially all you have to do is trap the snowshoe to take it off, tip the toe up, take the toe out, take your toe forward, and bring your heel out. My new moccasins with soles aren't quite as good. So putting it back in, just reversing that. Toe goes in. Typically I would wear soft soled winter moccasins. Or I wouldn't even have to bend over. Keeping it trapped with the other foot, tip up, push in, and you're walking. Okay, so that was a pretty short tutorial, so I thought I might as well throw in a wee bit of history and, uh, and, and tell a little story, if you would, that it, it involves these guys. But I, I gotta get my musket out of the snow first. So, if we go back to the mid-1700s, uh, there is nothing that would strike fear into the heart of a Frenchman in the New World than hearing the words Ro Robert Rogers. So, Robert Rogers is given a, a captain's uh, position in 1755 with the New Hampshire group. He's renowned for his ability to go on scouts. He's, he's ruthless in, in, in exercising his duties. And he, his, he falls under the ear and eye of Sir William Johnson, whom we talked about last week. And so he orders him to up to the, the Hudson uh, River area, the upper Hudson. He takes him, he falls under his command. So now we're going to fast forward to uh, a couple of years to 17, um, 1758. And we're in the second year of a seven-year war, the French and Indian Wars, which literally was the war for the continent. And, and Rogers is stationed at Fort, uh, Fort, Fort Edward, and he's, he's given uh, an order to do a reconnoitering scout to scout out the French positions and their strength. Now, right off the get-go, Rogers doesn't like this because he's pretty sure the French already know of their plans. Uh, they had one of the rangers on a previous expedition that was captured, which would lend itself through perhaps torture of him spilling the beans and one of the rangers had deserted so he was pretty confident but anyway he's at Fort, Fort Edward um, and he's under the command of a Lieutenant Colonel Haviland and he's supposed to have 400 men for this re reconnoitering operation and on the eve of the uh, Haviland decides to give him 184. Now Roger don't like this much and uh, and uh, but he's a soldier first and foremost so off he goes on it reminds me of a there's a the movie they made on Gettysburg where Hood is talking to General Hood is talking to uh, General Longstreet and he says I do this under protest <laughs> but anyway off goes off goes Rogers along the Lake George area heading north from Fort Edwards and they're trying to stick to the hills now to to set the stage because they're, they're, they're too visible on the lake so to set the stage this is a bitter cold march, um, and one of the biggest snowfalls they'd had in decades. So there's a good four feet of snow on the level. Now, we've had three feet here this winter, and it's starting to settle a bit now, but you don't go anywhere without wearing these guys, unless it's on a packed trail, or you just wallow around in this stuff. So, so they're forced to wear snowshoes on this, which brings us to the Battle of March 13th, 1758, and it became known as the Battle in Snowshoes. So. Rogers is keeping pretty head. He, he leaves in the 10th. Now on the third morning of the 13th, his forward guard, they, um, they uncover uh, a group of natives, mostly natives, a few Frenchmen, uh, and they set an ambush for them. Well, he's good at what he does, uh, and the ambush works. They kill about 40 of the, of the natives, mostly natives, and, and they think they're doing pretty good, so they're chasing after these fellows. They're gonna, they're gonna get them all if they can. But bringing up this first group is the rear guard under um, Anson de Langley. And, and this French fellow, he hears the gunfire. So he sets up an ambush of himself. And, and Robert Rogers, he leads his men right into it. Um, 50 men are killed almost immediately. 
But then it's a heated battle in snowshoes and these big high hills uh, overlooking Lake George. Battle goes on for an hour and a half. The French repeatedly try to flank them. And at this point, he's reduced his numbers so significantly, he has no option but to retreat. So a small group of the uh, rangers, and we, they were known as British rangers, but history will simply remember them as Rogers rangers. Anyway, a small group of them surrender. And they happened to find a scalp in one of the man's pockets. Well, they, they killed them all on the spot, the ones that had surrendered. Uh, the few that remaining alive make their way back to Lake George, and there's a local legend that, uh, that, the, uh, that uh, Rogers actually made his escape by sliding down a 400-foot sort of rock face slope. And it's, to this day, it's known as Rogers Slide or Rogers Rock. Um, the French thought he was dead because they found his regimental coat and inside it was his military commission. So they assumed they'd killed him. But uh, no, <laughs> there's a whole lot more I could talk about uh, Captain Roger Rangers. He shortly after that gets appointed to a major and uh, continues to fight in that war and continues to fight in the American Revolution War 25 years later. Anyway, we a bit of history there. So I'm going to enjoy a little bit more of this winter because we're fast losing it. The snow's starting to settle. It's just about above freezing today, so maple, shir or maple sugar is going to soon be being made over fire pots all around our area and hope to take part in some of that.